okay, we're still working on systems, but these are a little different. We're back to blackboard reality, whiteboard reality, length and width, but no depth, no height, just X and Y. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be graphing inequalities. Now in beginning algebra, you did these, but you did them one at a time. And you graphed them. But now we're going to do two at a time. And we're going to be finding the points of intersection. This is the third baby step into logistics. And this is definitely what companies like Amazon do. OK, so. This is the method. Again. We're talking about method. So I'm going to take X plus Y is less than or equal to four. OK. And to graph this inequality. I'm going to write X plus y equals 4 because my first step is just to find a line graph the line and then graphing the inequality part is different i'll be doing that to the green one also let me put it over here x minus y equals three. Okay, so now, let's forget all about the inequalities for a minute. I am just going to find two points that the blue line goes through. The intercepts, those are usually the easiest. Make an XY chart. Or you could probably do this in your head. If X is zero, what is Y? And if Y is zero, what is X? Well, that's kind of easy. If X is zero, you'll have zero plus Y equals four. So Y equals four. And if y is 0, you'll have x plus 0 equals 4, so x equals 4. So what this gives us is two points that the blue line goes through. You've done this so many millions of times. 0 comma 4 and 4 comma 0. So I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to plot these points 0, 4 and 4, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'll graph a line between them and out the other sides. Pretty close. Okay, and now I'll go the other way. Okay, this now, this right here is the line part of x plus y equals, well, it is x plus y equals 4. This is what the, what the, what the line part is called. Okay. 
Now, I'm not ready to move on to the next one yet because what I have to do now is go back to the inequality because after all, this is a really an inequality. And so now I'm going to work on the inequality part of this line, which is X plus Y is less than or equal to four. And the way you graph the inequality part is a step-by-step -step method. Step one, find a test point. Oh, a test, a test point. No, mm -mm, a test point because you're going to test it. What is a test point? A test point is any point not on the line. Okay, it can be anywhere over here, over here, over here, or over here, any point. Isn't that pretty? Just not a point on the line. Well, that's easy enough. Let me erase my points here. So a lot of the time, the point you choose is pretty much, you know, just a matter of your personality. What do you like best? Well, the truth is, <clears throat> whenever you can get away with it, the point that will give you the quickest answer is the point zero, zero. And you'll see why. Since zero, zero is not on the line, I can use it and I really like it. So here's point zero, zero, right there. And for point zero, zero, that means that the X equals zero here and the Y equals zero here. Cool. That's why I like it, because look what happens. We're going to use X plus Y is less than or equal to four. I'm going to put a zero in for X and a zero in for y. And I'm going to ask myself, is that less than four? Is it true that zero is less than four? Well, of course it's not equal to four, but it's definitely less than four. If you eat zero apples, that's a lot less than eating four apples. Might get a tummy ache too. I mean, if you ate four apples. Or maybe not. So, what's important here is that this gave me a true answer. My test point gave me a true answer. When that happens, I'm happy. I am now going to shade on the side where I got a true answer. If I had gotten a false answer, I would have had to shade on the other side. But I didn't, I got a true answer. So I'm going to shade over here, which is why stealing your children's, um, I'm so terrible, stealing your children's, um, colored pencils can be real fun. You always want to do this by hand before you do it over here, which is why I'm doing this this way. Meanwhile, let me tap over here 
just to let my math lab know that I'm not ignoring it. I don't want it to click off. OK. Now, of course, if you're using colored pencils, you can just, you know, do that. On a tablet, you can just make it thicker. That's what I should have done. I should have made it really thick. But I didn't. So I'll just have to live with myself. Okay, it's good enough. A little abstract art. I am done with X plus Y is less than or equal to four. I'm now going to go over to X minus Y is less than or equal to three. And I'm going to perform exactly the same steps. I'm going to look at the line part first, which is X minus Y equals three. And I'm going to change to a green marker. And I'm going to find points. And I like to work with an X and Y chart just because this is the first way I was taught to graph. And it, it sort of takes the thinking out, especially when you put a zero here and a zero here. If X is zero, well, let's actually write this out. If X is zero, you're going to have zero minus Y equals Three. Well, zero minus y is negative one times y. Of course, there was a negative one here anyway. Zero minus it will just be negative one times y equals three. And then I'll divide both sides by negative one. And so I get y equals three. So cool. When X is zero, Y is three. Now if Y is zero, I'll have X minus zero equals three. Well, that's a lot easier and quicker. X minus zero is just X. So if Y is zero, X is three, oops, 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3. There now. Here are my two points. Let's put them over here. 0, negative 3, and 3, 0. Now I'm going to plot those two points. Zero, negative three is one, two, three, right here. And three, zero is one, two, three, right here. And I'm going to get a green line. I have to cheat like this because it's the only way I can make anything that even resembles a straight line. And down here. Okay. This is the line part of this inequality. So get my green marker here. y, uh, x minus y equals three is what that line is. Okay, so now that I've graphed the line, which was the whole purpose of taking away the inequality sign, I'm going to switch back to what this problem really is, which is, 
X minus Y is less than or equal to three. And that's true, okay. Now, I have to find a test point and then test the test point. Again, I could use any point not on the green line. I could even use a point that's on the blue line, as long as it's not on the green line, because that's what I'm working with right now. But notice that my very, very favorite point, zero, zero, is not on the green line, so I can use it. Make it open like that so that I can still see that this was true for the blue, but now I'm going to see if it's true for the green. And it will be. If X is zero and Y is zero, then zero minus zero is zero. And we know that zero is less than three, certainly not equal to three, but definitely less than three. So zero, zero is here. So that's a true for the green. It doesn't have to be, but it's a true for the green. So I am going to shade with a green color. Well, I don't have a green. I only have that blue. I'll make a green, maybe. Okay, here, we're gonna change this color to green, look at that! All right, gonna change that color to green, maybe make it a little wider, and then accept it and start coloring toward the true, right? just to make sure I get it. Okay, now. This, let me pull out a little bit. This is what we've got right here. Isn't that a beautiful work of art? Well, we, don't, we didn't do it for art. We did it because in your business, you need to know where you can find answers that are true for whatever the green color means and whatever the blue color means at the same time. And that is in here. This is the answer you're looking for. This area right here. So, now we know what the solution is to our graph. So what I'm going to do now is attempt to graph. But I want to be able to look at my answer also. So let's make this smaller. See, I need my points also. So yeah, I need my points. And not being 100% sure I could memorize them, I wanna leave them like that. Meanwhile, okay, I wanna make this bigger. And click. Okay, see, it didn't do any good. It never does any good. All right, this is going to be as big as I can get it, I think. Yeah. All right. Now, first, you have to tell my math lab what the heck you're graphing. And click, I'm graphing a line. 
So let's see, I'll do the blue one first just because I have it on the left here. 0, 4, and 4, 0. So I come over here and I click on one of those two points, 4, 0. See, and it tells me up here in the upper left hand corner, upper right hand corner, what point I'm on. It makes it safer. Now I need to go to 0, 4. Yeah, OK, there it is. There's 0, 4. What is that negative 4, 8? What are you talking about? It's 4, 0. No. There. Oh! Not what I care about. There we go. OK. Now, Usually you just save and check, but there are two lines here. So I have to do the other line now. So once again, I click on the line. And I go over to my green points, zero, negative three, and three, zero. So here is zero, negative three. And I want to go to three, zero. But really, come on. I don't think it matters, but I just feel better. OK, now, now I'm not done. I've graphed both lines, but what I need to do now. Is be aware of what my answer area is. This is actually called in business your Region of greatest probability. Huh? The region where you're most likely to get an answer that's profitable for you. OK, I'm going to click. There um, you see that cute little paint paint bucket. Region shading tool to heck with that. It's a paint bucket and I'm going to drag it over here. And click. There now. I'm going to save. <gasps> and I'm going to check. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I am not done. Because now we're going to find the vertex. There are only two lines, so these cross in one place. When you're dealing with inequalities, the solution of the system is called the vertex of the system. Just the way it is. I need to calculate what that point of intersection is. So, you stay there. I am going back to the lines, x plus y equals 4, x minus y equals 3. But I want more room, so I'll move down here. So now I'm just going to work in black. X plus Y equals four and X minus Y equals three. And I'm going to add vertically. Why, why don't I multiply both lines by something? Because I already know that if I add these Y is going to zero out. But if I had to, would I multiply one line by something and another line by something else? You bet. All right, X plus X is 2X. X minus Y is zero. 
and four plus three is seven. So two X equals seven. X equals, well, divide by two, divide by two. X equals seven over two. Now at this point, it says type an ordered pair, use a comma to separate answers, excuse me, as needed. <clears throat> Sometimes it says you have to answer with fractions or integers. Um, well, that doesn't say. So I'm going to go for 3.5, which is what 7 over 2 is. You can't always do that. In fact, I probably should not do it, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to see if I can. All right, now I've got an answer for X. Need to find Y. So. That looks easier to me. X plus Y equals 4. 3.5 plus Y equals 4. I'm going to subtract 3.5 from both sides of the equation. y equals 4.0 minus 3.5 is 0.5, or one half. Okay, so I've got x, I've got y. I have no idea why I wrote an x in there. But 3.5 and 0.5, or 0.5, or the all-American way to do it is seven over two and one half. Let's see if either of those are right, but I wanna put in decimals just because usually you can't put in decimals, won't count it right. So I wanna see if I can. Parentheses. Look at this, you have a point tool all set up for you. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, 7.5. Click. And I'll, I'll be a good person and write 0 0.5. No, I, I won't, I'm being bad. 0.5. See, that always happens. I have never been able to get that second blue dealie to work. Check with it. Check answer. You poop heads. Um, I think you put a seven instead of a three for the. You're right. Okay, they're not poop heads. I take it back. Why are you doing this to me? It's a plot. I tell you, it's a plot. What is that? Go away. It really is. Dog got it. You can put cancel at the bottom right there. I give up. I give up. Anyway, that's how you do it, okay? You do it on your paper first, and then you do it on the on the uh, my math lab. Any discussion about that? If I had put in fractions, I bet it would have worked because I had seven on the brain. Let's go over the steps and then we'll do another one. Okay, here are our inequalities. That's really little. 
Here are our two inequalities. Step one, you graph them like lines. You just, well, choose one. Go to your paper, find two points. You've got to actually find the points because you're going to transfer those to my math lab. Find two points that are on the line part. Graph the line. Then remember that you're dealing with an inequality. Write down the inequality. Find a test point. It doesn't have to be zero, zero. It's just my favorite. Find out if you get a true answer or a false answer. If I had chosen this, as my test point, it would have given me a false. So I would have shaded in the other direction. Either way, it's the same side. Okay, so now you do the same thing to the other inequality. You get the line part by finding two points that are on the line. Then you find out where you need to shade. So you choose a test point. If the test point gives you a true, you shade on the true side. If a test point were to give me a false, like over here for the green, then I would have shaded. I would not have shaded there where I would have gotten a false. I would have known that if one side gives me a false, the other will give me a true. So I shade on the true side. Once I know where my overlapping colors are, I know that this is where I'm going to drag my paint bucket in my math lab. So you go to my math lab, you use the two points you've got for the first line and you graph a line. Then, you use the two points you've got for the other line and you graph a line. Then you drag your paint bucket to where you've seen that the overlap of the colors is. And then you click check answer and hopefully it tells you you're right. Then you get asked where's the vertex or vertices, plural. So you find the point of intersection. And if you're lucky enough to put the right numbers in, you will get a true and get all the, all the uh, um, credit for that problem. So it's not hard. It's not hard. Again, it just takes practice. OK. Now. I had already made another sh another sheet. think that's it. Yeah. See, I was just going to do this totally on paper, and then I got the brilliant idea to use my math lab. But you do have to know how to graph these on my math lab. But now you know. So let's work on this system right here. A little smaller. Yeah. 6y minus x is less than or equal to 6, and y plus 5x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Notice that they are trying to mess you up right now. Well, usually the y's aren't there, but yeah, you can just keep it this way. Okay, I take it back. Let us first, I mean, they do have the Y's on, on, you know, above each other, above and below each other, and the X's above and below each other, so that's not the worst it could be. 
I'm going to let this be the blue line and this be the green line. And you don't need colors, you can always just use a pencil. It's just more fun. Okay, so blue first. 6y minus x equals 6. So I'm going to make an x and a y chart. If x is 0, what is y? If y is 0, what is x? Let's find out. If x is 0, you're going to have, let's see, if x is 0, you're going to have 6y minus 0 equals 6. So 6y equals 6, divide by 6, divide by 6, y equals 1. Okay, Point zero 0.01. Now, what if y is 0? You'll have 6 times 0 minus x equals 6. 6 times 0 is 0, so you'll have negative x equals 6. Now, negative x is exactly the same thing as negative 1x, so divide both sides by negative 1, and you'll get x equals negative 6. So these are the two points I'm going to use to graph the blue line, 0, 1, and negative 6, 0. Negative 6, 0 is right here, and 0, 1 is right there. All right, and this line is 6y minus x equals 6. Now I go back to 6y minus x is less than or equal to 6 and I choose a test point, which I will always choose to be zero, zero when I can get away with it. That is when it's not on the line. Okay, so that's zero. X equals zero, Y equals zero. So six times, well, six times zero minus zero, is that less than or equal to six? Of course it is. Zero is less than six, not equal to, but less than. So that means I shade in the direction of zero, zero. I should really go all the way down, but come on, really? You get the idea. Okay. So I am temporarily finished with that line. 
Now I move on to my green line. Y plus five X equals negative one. So now you're gonna see a problem here with my usual strategy. If X is zero, we're going to have y plus five times zero equals negative one. So y equals negative one. No problem. This is going to be zero, negative one, my first point. So zero, negative one, zero, negative one is gonna be here. Now, watch what happens if I let y equal zero. Zero plus five x equals negative one. Five x equals negative one. X equals negative one fifth. Stuff happens, but you don't want to have to graph a fraction because it's really hard to find. So we are going to have to try another point. Any other point, really. I already have one point. Now, I am just going to have to say, OK, well, what if x equal, oh, I already did that, x equals 1? Well, then I'll have y plus 5 times 1 equals negative 1. That's y plus 5 equals negative 1. Subtract 5. Subtract 5. y equals negative 1 minus 5 or negative 1 plus negative 5. That's negative 6. So now my second point is going to be a little uh, different from what I usually do. It's going to be the point I get when X is one and Y is negative six. Is that a terrible thing? No. We can live with this. It's just that sometimes your best laid plans don't work out. So you have to look around for alternatives, just like real life. Okay, so zero, negative one, I already took care of that. Now one, negative six. Go to the right one, well, no, start at the center. Go to the right one and down six, two, four, six. There's negative six, positive one right there. That is positive one, negative six. Okay, so first, need a line. There. And. Okay, 
So it was a little more trouble, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Now, y plus 5x is greater than or equal to negative 1. I have to choose a test point. Now I've been constantly choosing zero, zero, and it looks like I could choose zero, zero, but I don't want to, I don't feel comfortable. So, um, how about this? Let's see what that is. That's four, four. Okay, I can let that be my test point. Now I can go back down here. All right, my TP, my test point is 4, 4. So y plus 5x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, that's pretty easy. 4 plus 5 times 4 is going to be 24. And is 24 equal to or greater than negative 1? Not equal to, but greater than. So 4, 4 is giving me a true for the green line. So I'm going to shade on the side where I got a true. No, you're not doing that to me, are you? Completely covering up the blue. All right. We can still see the blue through there. Whereas this is solid green and there's no no blue underneath it. So that means my answer area or region of greatest prob probability is in here. When I graph this now, I will use that, well, I'll use the two points I found for the blue line, and then I won't hit save. Instead, I'll click on the line again, the, the line icon, and write down the two points I got for the greeny here, zero negative one and one negative six. And so I'll graph those two lines and then I'll drag my little paint bucket here. And click. And so this area will be shaded and then you save. And you're told. That's great. Now. What about the vertex? That's another story. That's what down here is for. OK. Again, we're going to be working with the lines and we want to find that point right there. Looks like it's going to be. There are going to be fractions involved. 6y minus x equals 6. And y plus 5x
equals negative one. So let me go make sure. Y plus five X equals negative one. Okay. So there we are. I am going to have, I think the easiest thing to do, well, here are my choices. If I treat this like row one and row two, then I can multiply row one by positive five, then I would have a negative five plus five is zero. Or I can multiply this row by negative six and have six minus six. 6y minus 6y is 0, and it doesn't really matter because we need both. So I think what I'll do is I'll multiply row 1 by 5. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not going to get away from 30 no matter what I do. Okay, so 5 times row 1 is going to be 30y minus 5x equals 30. And row 2 is going to be y plus 5x equals negative 1. Oh, this is going to be ugly. All right, maybe. 30y plus 1y is 31y plus 0 equals 29. I am going to get a headache. Did I make a mistake that you can think of? See, this is, this is your first response to getting something you don't like. All right, but these things do happen in real life. 31, 31. So y is going to equal 29 over 31. Now I can see, I can see that Yep, I can. I can see that I really don't want to have to plug 29 over 31 in for Y. I would really rather not do that. So what I can do is just use, um, it's my choice, I can use um, elimination again. So 6Y minus x equals 6. And this time I'm going to multiply negative, uh, I'm going to multiply r2 by negative 6. So negative 6 times y is negative 6y. Negative 6 times 5x is a uh, uh, negative 30 x and negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. Now biting the bullet I continue 6y minus 6y is 0. This is negative 1x minus 30x or negative 1x plus negative 30x is negative 31x. And six plus six is 12. So x x is going to equal negative 12 over 31. And so our vertex is negative 12 
over 31. 29 over 31. Now that's pretty weird, but not impossible. So let's look and see. 29 over 31 is almost 1. 31 over 31 is 1. And that looks for all the world like it could be 1. So 29 over 31, it even looks like, yeah, it's a little bit below y equals 1. So yeah, that looks right for y. Now for x, the x is definitely negative. And I don't know, 12 over 36, negative 12 over 36 would be negative one third. And that kind of looks like it's almost one third of the way to negative one. So I would be assuring myself, if this were on a test and I were taking this on a test, I would say to myself, self, it looks to me like that point right there could very well be this point right here. So I would feel pretty comfortable typing that as a fraction, not a decimal, typing this as a fraction because the fraction probably goes on for the, the decimal expansion probably goes on forever. And so you would have to round it off and that would make the answer not exact. So you'd have to answer with fractions and there you go. This is number seven, incidentally. Of course, the, the individual numbers will be changed, but probably. Oh, and that doesn't mean that this is going to be the right, the right area. This, this is one version of problem six, and this is one version of problem seven. Well, what about one, two, three, four, and five in your homework? Well, one, two, three, and four are just one linear inequality, which most of you already know how to do from beginning algebra. But we could, if we had to, go back and take a look at them. Okay, notice you've got two videos here. If you want to get credit for them, at least pretend you're watching. Although, these are going to be pretty short, and they might be helpful. Okay. Question one. You're given the inequality y is greater than 2x, and you're asked to identify it over here. Make a quick little sketch. It should be easy. Number two is, let me make this bigger. Try to make it bigger. There. Number two, y is less than or equal to x minus three. Choose which graph is correct. Much easier if you make your own little sketch. Let's talk about how to do that in the time we have left. So, this is just a little one. You know, it's just one inequality. Y is less than or equal to X minus three. Okay, and let's make a graph.
Okay. Now you use the same method we used for two, except you've only got one. I would turn this I would turn this into a line, find two points, um, if x is 0, y is negative 3, and now the hard one is, or harder one is, if y is 0, Add three to both sides. Three equals X. So if Y is zero, X is three. So if we go like this, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, Five, of course, that's negative, and negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Then we will have zero, negative three, three, zero, not drawn to scale, and then draw a line. After you draw the line, you drag your paint bucket over, but you have to know where, which side. So let's go back to the inequality. Y is less than or equal to X minus three. You bet I'm gonna choose my favorite point. Zero, zero. Okay, so zero is less than or equal to zero minus three. Zero is less than or equal to negative three. No way zero is less than a negative number. Zero is greater than any negative number. So that means this is a false. What are we going to do? Shade on the other side. That's it. So you drag your little paint bucket over to this side. And you're done. There's no vertex to find because you don't have another line. This is just one line all by itself. But since you're supposed to identify one of these, I would go for D. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. And then that's number three, a version of number three. Notice that when you don't have an equals two bar underneath your inequality sign, that causes the line to be dashed. So don't be fooled. Remember dashed lines, solid lines, real easy rule there. So if it has a line under the um, it's a solid line. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, solid line. Strictly less than, strictly greater than, dashed line. Using the correct attitude, 
These can be fun. I mean, seriously, if you've got kids, uh, you and your child get together and do this particular homework and, and let the kids do the shading. You tell them where to shade and then let the kids do the shading. It could actually bring all of you together and might make them have a better attitude towards school as well. <laughs>